So for those that don't know, um, Doolin Valley Tudo, which was Keith's gym, at one Justin, point... Justin's gym as much as mine. Jim, well, well, here, okay. The Wisniewski Brothers gym. Okay, that, 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 that's fair. I, I apologize. That's true. That's true. I know Justin did a lot of the, uh, the work and training regimens and... Really, he was the main, the head trainer. So I was, you know, I was the head manager. I managed the guys and Justin was the main trainer. He was the head corner man. So it was our gym together. We owned it together. But if you had to say who was the head trainer, it was undoubtedly him. That's awesome. So I like to kind of just look at, and there's going to be some people that leave off of this list, but I'm just like looking at the people that received a UFC or strike force or Bellator contract from your gym and it's pretty impressive like sometimes gyms even in like big metropolitan areas if they can get one guy to the ufc it's like it's the cornerstone of that coach of, of that coach's life and when you look at what you've done from like a relatively rural area of northwest indiana you got john Colossi, darren elkins eddie wineland josh shockley and mark birch I don't know if I'm leaving anybody out from there, but this is all homegrown talent that both, you know, that your brother and yourself both developed, you know, in a garage and made it to the big show. And two of which, I mean, look at Darren Elkins and, and Eddie Wineland are still making a name for themselves. And it's very impressive. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of what we did as a gym. I, I'm biased, obviously, but I thought we were one of the best or maybe the best gym in Chicago for a time. Um, I think Fair undoubtedly. Enough fast in northwest indiana at a time um i think we did it mostly just through i think our workouts are more intense than most other gyms you know i mean they by the end of our workout the, the room was like 90 degrees and there'd be like a quarter inch of water on the ground you know because there was that much sweat. <laughs> it's not water <laughs> not water but you know we just it was we can't we were in a wrestling town portage is a wrestling town and uh we got a lot of really elite wrestlers to come in and we just kind of, it was almost like a college wrestling rooms mindset where it's just a lot of really high level athletes competing against each other. And it kind of fed and built and then fighters, you know, guys who were good athletes would see the success and then, you know, they wanted to be part of that. So yeah, for a while there, I really think we were a pretty elite gym and it's nice to see a few of the guys still making like an actual living, like they're going to probably retire as fighters, yeah. you know, maybe not have to do a J job afterwards. Yeah. And I was, I was always real proud of, you know, the, the, you know, you guys were from Indiana and I know you guys and uh, you know, just, just not that you were just from here, but the way you guys fought just a tough gritty style, especially like a, like a Darren Elkins. I remember watching him and, and tell people, no, no, watch this guy. He said, even if he's losing, he's going to grind it out. He's going to, he's done that so many times where he's losing the first round, the second round just sticks to it. Just that tough, gritty, like blue collar worker, which was what you guys were. So uh, I kind of loved having that, you know, that, that's my favorite kind of style. And, and you guys are right there. It's, it's pretty awesome. We kind of felt the same about integrated. I mean, that was, there was <laughs> Thank you. There. So you guys definitely had the same reputation. Good. Yeah. yeah that's what, that's my favorite reputation. That's the kind of, Jim, we wanted to be so you guys were that and like those are my indiana guys you know kill i love the, the darren darren elkins copied your head movement style like to a t <laughs> yeah but we're not very graceful fighters <laughs> <laughs> no but but you got i mean the thing is is that's what chris is talking about is like put your know, put your head down and just move forward and, and that bite down you know, that, the mouthpiece. Makes, that makes for a lot of excitement and stuff like that but yeah you, you, you're not uh you know, you're not going to be confused with Floyd Mayweather. No, no, I think that's a fair <laughs> statement. Fair statement. Well, Keith, man, thank you so much for joining us. And, you know, I, I also like to think that you know, never mind, like, all the accomplishments of yourselves and your teammates. I, I think your biggest accomplishment or your brother's, the gym, the gym's biggest accomplishment is taking people off of the streets. Like, some of the guys from your gym, some of the guys – that are from kind of adverse backgrounds, they go to a gym where they kind of, you know, let that person act out or act crazy, talk whichever way they want. And they go, Hey, well, that's just him. When one of those people showed up over at Doolin, you guys had like a, 
a tight leash around them. Like, no, you're going to handle yourself like us. Like, you're going to walk the walk and you're going to talk the talk. And, you know, one of those guys that stands out is Mark Birch. I mean, Mark Birch is some time in prison. And when you talk to Mark, it's like, well, you know, when I went to Europe this time, I, I really liked how socially speaking, this took place and the government worked that way. And <laughs> I have no doubt. And, and you know, I, I throw Mark's name out there without, you know, w- without real care because I, I know Mark doesn't mind. But I think you guys, in Mark's case, turned his entire life around. And that's just one of many, many examples of the people that walk through your gym. Like you, your biggest win, your, your, your gym's biggest win is I think the community, what you guys have done for it, at least on a local level. We're definitely a tight knit group. You know, I mean, you, you cited a guy like Birch and I think we did a lot for Birch, but those are, you know, a guy like Birch or Darren or Josh. I mean, these guys were coaches at the gym. I mean, they were leaders and they did that for other people, you know, so it was, it, all those people put in probably more than they took out from the gym. Um, but yeah, I think there's a fair amount of people and we weren't really open to everyone. We switched to a tryout system because we really didn't want people who weren't willing to work. You didn't have to be a great athlete, but you had to be willing to work as hard as we worked. Nice. But, but as long as you had that effort, I mean, you were welcome at our gym and you were going to train right along with, you know, I mean, there were guys in the UFC you can come in your first day and be thrown into that line as long as you're willing to go as hard as you can, you know? And I think that sort of the type of person that can persevere through that is going to improve from that, you know, socially improve athletically. They're going to make tight bonds and friendships. And I, so to this day, those are, you know, those are my best friends. Some of my old teammates, those are the guys I stay in touch with. Um, and I think with each other as well, you know, I mean, all those guys still have a pretty tight kinship. The UFC did Birch wrong, dude. You know, 